We begin from the eastern region and less than a week after government deployed military men to bench our funds and smoke out illegal miners on the Birim River, the Galamseyas are back. Drone footage from a freelance journalist, Adam Sai, showed images of work on the same river. Day October 10, Operation Halt started as part of government's renewed effort to clamp down on Galamse. At the time, some 18 chamfans and 10 industrial water pumping machines were bent by the task force on the Brim River in Etiwa East and West District. No arrests were made as the illegal miners got wind of the deployment and fled. Commander of the operations, Colonel Eric Tenadu, said the military will be stationed there for about two weeks to ensure compliance. So far as you are on our water bodies or you are along the water bodies, you are our target. We are trying to clear off, clear all of them from our water bodies to make sure that our water body return to the normal color that we are all looking for. So the immediate uh, assignment it's estimated to last for about two weeks. Then after that, uh, we'll know what to, to do next, or depending on the instructions and the directives that we'll receive after that one. Latest drone footage taken on Monday, October 14, shows that the work has commenced on the river with new chamfan equipment. In the new video, the drone shot revealed human activities on the river. Speaking in a telephone interview, the chairman of the Frontier Aqua North District Security Council, Ernesto Fosu, said the operation halt exercised by the military is still in force in the Achim enclave to wade off miners on water bodies as directed by government. To our headline story now, the Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbing, is expected to rule on the petition that seeks to declare the seats of four members of parliament vacant. The petition brought forth by former minority leader Haruna Idrisu has stirred significant debate within the chamber. Haruna Idrisu's petition challenges the position of three majority MPs and one minority MP from his own NDC. The speaker, Alban Bagbin, after a heated exchange of viewpoints, decided to defer his ruling. He emphasized the need for more time to carefully consider the constitutional implications and to ensure that his decision would be both comprehensive and just. Now, one of the uh, members of parliament who is going independent um, in the Memphis Central constituency, specifically Peter Yao Kwache Aka, uh, has joined us on Zoom for a quick chat regarding um, the latest decision by a member of the NDC in the person of Haruna Idrisu asking that his seat be declared vacant. Honorable, a very good evening to you. Thank you for joining us on News 360. Thank you very much. And good evening to your viewers and listeners. Thank right. you very much. I'm sure you were in Parliament yesterday and followed the conversation regarding the four seats that uh, the Speaker has been petitioned to declare vacant, one of which being yours. What do you make of it? How did you feel in the first place knowing that there is a threat to your seat before the, the current house rises? Um, I must say, let me just greet my constituents. I'm in Fifth Central. That, uh, I miss them very much. Very soon I'll join them um, to go around and campaign and tell people what I want to do for them. Um, I think uh, you mentioned um, the the argument that went on yesterday concerning the um, MPs who have uh, filed for independent. Uh, I'm one of them, and I believe that to every action, there is a reaction. Uh, and so if I filed for independent, I believe that there's going to be a reaction to it. And uh, it should be equal. As we learned in uh, science, action and reaction are equal and opposite. So um, I believe that... Uh, there's a precedent. I mean, I was in the seventh parliament when uh, the former MP, the current um, um, deputy, second deputy speaker, also went on the uh, same tangent. He was, uh, uh, his seat was declared vacant by the then um, speaker of parliament, Honorable Michael Quay. And so there is a precedent, but uh, we do not know what the current um, speaker also is going to do. He is an experienced man.
But, but do you uh, agree the that the, the, the call or the petition is justified, that immediately you declare your intentions to the extent that you have even filed to, to contest as an independent candidate, that uh, inadvertently means that your seat should be declared vacant. You agree with that position at least? As right? I said, there are, there are schools of thought. Uh, I've heard uh, two um, schools of thought, um, 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 eminent lawyers arguing these things out. So it depends on the decision of the speaker. It doesn't mean that if you have a case in court, two judges will judge the same case the same way. Right. It doesn't follow that. It depends on the individual. So that's why I say that if I knew that what is going to then there's no point. But it could happen that uh, this uh, current speaker is going to take the line of the previous speaker or that he will try to uh, use a different means. But right. as a layman, I'm, I'm an engineer, I'm not a lawyer. But I think as a legislator, sometimes we read these things and uh, we understand. Uh, my simple understanding is that uh, um, during the man's time, there was uh, this... Uh, cross captain of MPs mm. that you could from uh, one one place go to the other by just crossing the maze and going to the other side or declaring that you are no more for this political party you want to go to the other side. Okay. And I think the premiers of this constitution realized that that could be a problem. So they inserted that before you can join another political party, mm. you need to resign your seat and then uh, the seat will be vacant and then it will be contested for. If you win, then you go to the other side. That okay. was to uh, break up some checks. Um, so this one, I believe that uh, if somebody has declared to go as an independent candidate, he's uh, talking about the next parliament and not this okay. one. Okay. Uh, like in my case, I've not decided to, uh, to resign from my party. I'm still with the NDC. So now if there's a vote today and there's a whip, I'm going to go with the NDC. Right. There's no doubt about it because okay. I have declared my intention in the next parliament that I do not want to go as an as, as an MP for the for the NDC, and that I'll go as an independent. Okay. So All I right. believe that it depends on the interpretation that one will give to, right. to this one. But if uh, I we, we, are, we all that, await yeah. that interpretation, Honourable. Thank you for at least giving yes. us clarity and your position on this. Uh, Peter Yao Kwachi Aka is a uh, member of Parliament for the Memphis Central Constituency. Tomorrow we all await to hear what the Speaker's uh, position or ruling will be regarding the call or the petition to him to declare uh, some seats vacant. Still on this subject, though, let's engage the thoughts of former Speaker of Parliament himself, uh, Professor Aaron Michael Kue, who was the Speaker of the Seventh Parliament. It was during his leadership uh, of, of the House that the Formina constituency seat was declared vacant. So he's joined us on phone to at least pick his thoughts on the current debate in the House of Parliament. Um, Honorable uh, Professor Mike Okwe, good evening and thank you for joining us on News 360. Well, thank you very much. Great. Uh, you, you declared the Formena constituency seat vacant when the MPP drew your attention to the fact that one of their own had decided to contest as an independent candidate. There is a similar development in Parliament where four MPs have decided to contest as independent candidates. It is only fair that, based on your precedence, the current speaker should also declare those four seats vacant. You would agree, right? No, it's not that simple. In fact, in order to understand this matter clearly, you have to give it a purposive interpretation. And if you want to give it a purposive interpretation, then you must know, ask yourself, but where is this coming from at all in our, in our Constitution? It is coming from 1979 Constitution and 1969 Constitution. Why did this start at all? Because in the Nkoma regime, there was this practice of carpet crossing. People moving for the political party that they belong to, upon inducement, upon fear, and so on and so forth. It was a tool used in breaking the opposition. Now, so in 1969, the Constitution famous wanted this not to happen again. Therefore, it's a protective measure. It is a shield for political parties so that their members in Parliament will not be induced or move out of their political party out of fear or whatever. Mm. It's go to the 
constitutional, legislative, constitution making proceedings, you will find this there. If you understand, then this is a tool in the hand of political parties to protect them, to protect them. And that is why when the Fomina case came, the first thing that I did when the political party the, that the member belonged to complained was to write to the Fomina uh, MP and ask him to explain and gave him seven days to do so. Mm. That letter was set on him. Oh, good. Then after that, he had an opportunity to defend himself. In fact, he said at that time he was not interested in any such thing. He was concentrating on his campaign. Okay. Fine. Having been given the opportunity, then the speech has to take a step. That step was to go by the Constitution. Mm. As the, the report has been made, and also the constitution of the party that he subscribed to also said that if you campaign against the party, if you hold yourself against the party, if you contest your official candidate, then you forfeit your membership. So the cumulative effect of the MPP constitution as they themselves said by the Secretary General of the MPP was a different matter so ever. Okay, now, so, so, so Prof, should it be our understanding that the current situation, from what you're saying, the current situation of these four members of parliament is totally different from the former NAS situation? Is that the point you're putting across? I'm clearly drawing the, the difference. As of now, what is the political party which has complained? And as of now, where is the opportunity to give those people complain against a hearing. This one is like an adjudication against them. Mm. So you must give them a hearing. Where is the hearing? Okay. And that is what uh, and you cannot really dismiss that person from parliament. You cannot take any step against him. You cannot take any punitive action against any human being in Ghana until you have applied the only authoritarian party rule, that is, Give him or her a hearing. All right. There's no deal. All right. And that is, please, can I finish? I want to learn because we need to understand the historicity and the implication of what is happening. And that is why, if you compare the present position, you will realize that nobody is being given an opportunity to defend himself or herself. Mm. But this is against that particular person. Now, if you make this a common general thing, that it become like a motion, uh, a motion in parliament. It will become a very dangerous uh, thing indeed. In fact, it will boomerang against mm. uh, the political party system. Why? Because you can imagine a situation where a party has a big majority in parliament. It can use this a way of destroying the opposition party. One, two, they will bring a complaint that there is some problem with that particular uh, political uh, that particular MP, and if the speaker is inclined towards accepting it, then that person will be thrown out of parliament. It cannot happen like that. And that is what the difference is. The, the commission and yours to the benefit of political parties. Okay. A political party has complained. I don't know of any complaint formally mm. by the political party to which these members belong. And Prof. also... They need to have an opportunity to defend themselves. Prof, thank you. Those are two critical points you bring to the conversation. One, someone must make a complaint. And in the case of Formina, the MPP actually drew your attention. One. It is not someone. It is the, the party. Part the party, right. To, to but, which the party belongs, yes. Yeah. Okay, but Prof, is it stated in law or is there any legal backing to that, that the speaker... Oh, the party must draw the speaker's attention to it before Article 97.1G is triggered. It is not a matter of drawing any attention. The political party involved, to whom that provision and yours, must make a complaint. Okay. The, the, the speaker will give that member 
opportunity to defend himself or herself. Right. The speaker will make an adjudication. This is not a motion to be debated upon politically and to be used as a political tool against members of parliament. And for what, 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 what if it is an independent candidate not belonging to any political party? What happens in this instance? Because we know that the Formula MP, who is currently an independent candidate, wants to contest on the ticket of the NPP. So what, what in your estimation, could happen here? That person is telling you that in future, with regard to the next uh, parliament, that will be the ninth parliament, I am going to run together with a particular political party. Who is complaining? But as for now, I'm an independent candidate. And I'll be an independent candidate until the expiration of the term of this particular parliament. After that, I'm going to be an, uh, 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 a member for the NPP if I win on their ticket. Who mm -hmm. is the complainant here? And that is why you must understand clearly what is this thing all about. This whole okay. provision, if you understand the politics of the First Republic and the fact that this was put in to protect political parties and to prevent kicking out members of parliament by way of maneuvering and scheming, mm. then you appreciate this whole thing. Okay. Professor Aaron Michael Quay. Thank you so much for uh, bringing some further perspective to this conversation. Certainly tomorrow is just a few hours away. We'll get to hear what the current Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagbin, would say regarding the petition before him. This is still News 360 on TV3. On to some other stories now. And in a significant legal development, the National Democratic Congress parliamentary candidate for Amefi Central, Joanna Jan Kujo, has been disqualified from contesting in the upcoming 2024 parliamentary elections. This decision comes following an order for interlocutory injunction issued by the High Court in Second D. The Electoral Commission confirmed the disqualification in a letter addressed to Mrs. Kujo, referencing a lawsuit filed by Jedu Fimpon and four others against her, the NDC and the EC. The court's order prohibits Madame Kujo from presenting herself as the duly elected candidate and restricts the NDC and its affiliates from recognizing her as such. The EC emphasized that it is bound by the court's order which has not been stayed or vacated as the political landscape shifts it remains to be seen how the NDC will respond to this setback and who will emerge as the candidate for the Amifi central seat already the incumbent NDC MP for the area Peter Yao Kwachaka is contesting as an independent candidate All right, let's uh, go on to some other stories now. And an Accra circuit court has charged Prophet Elisha Salifu Amwako, his wife, and another with one count of permitting an unlicensed person to drive. Prophet Amwako and his wife are parents of the 16-year-old responsible for an uh, accident at East Legon, leading to the death of two persons. There's more on this report. Prophet Elisha Salifu his wife, Muha, and Linda Bonsubempa, an employee of the other brother of the minor driver, pleaded not guilty to the charge of permitting an unlicensed person to drive. In court on Wednesday, the trio were handed a 50,000 CD bail with two sureties each. Prosecution noted that per the facts of the case, while celebrating the 25th birthday of his elder brother, Elion Amwako, Miss Bonsubempa allegedly gave the key to a Jaguar F-Pace sports SUV owned by Mrs. Amwako to the juvenile driver, although she knew the minor driver was not licensed to drive. The 16-year-old boy is allegedly to have driven the vehicle with another passenger, a friend heading towards the Baoleshi direction on the Jani Ashi Street. Upon reaching a section of the road at the Mensa Wood Avenue junction, he drove into the rear of an Akura 4x4 vehicle. The impact propelled both vehicles across the road into a fence wall of a nearby house. Both vehicles caught fire and got burnt beyond recognition. Two occupants of the Akura, namely Justine Agbenu and Mami Jomo Boating, both 12 years of age, were trapped in the burning vehicle and lost their lives as a result. 
that you are not driver and the two other occupants who survived the crash are currently on admission at the University of Ghana Medical Center. An Accra High Court has granted leading member of pressure group Democracy Hub Oliver Bakavomawa a 20,000 CD bill with two sureties. This follows three refusals twice by the Accra Circuit Court and once by the High Court, a report by Lord Edouasari. Oliver Bakavomawa had been in police custody since his arrest on September 21 after the stop Galamse now protest by Democracy Hub. Despite declining health concerns raised by his lawyers, the Democracy Hub leader was denied bail three times. Both judges at the circuit and high courts were concerned that Bakavoma would further commit offences if granted bail since he had already done so, though he was on bail for treason felony charge. Justice Aiti Amatete, however, ordered for his trial at the circuit courts to commence within 72 hours, failure at which the bail application will then be considered. In court on Wednesday, lead counsel for Oliver Bakavoma Dr. Sremsai indicated that the 72 hours had elapsed and the health of his client was dwindling. He thus prayed the court to grant him bail so he can be well catered for. The court then granted a 20,000 cities bill with two sureties. The judge further indicated that Oliver reports to the police twice a week. Oliver back of Omar and 22 other democracy protesters are back at the Accra Circuit Court for the continuation of their case. You recall that at the last adjourned days, the presiding judge in the matter ordered the prosecution to file their disclosures as well as their witness statements. We see how things will pan out from then onwards. The case uh, has been adjourned to October 24. Lodi Vasari, TV3 News, for High Court. I'm still in the courts, lawyer for the PNC's flag bearer, Bernard Mona, is hopeful that the Electoral Commission will heed to the advice of the court not to take decisions which will overreach the court's decision. The High Court uh, set Monday, October 21, to determine the fate of the presidential aspirant regarding his status on the ballot sheet. Another report from the courts by Lord Eduasari. The flag bearer of the People's National Convention, Bernard Mona, filed a judicial review at the High Court against the Electoral Commission seeking, among others, an order to quash its decision that disqualified him from contesting in the 2024 presidential elections. He is also seeking an order of mandamus to compel the Electoral Commission to declare him as a duly nominated candidate for his party to contest the 2024 election. When the case was called on Wednesday, lead counsel for Mona, Harold Atuguba, prayed the court to order the EC to desist from going ahead with the printing of ballot papers until the court's ruling on the matter. He argued that the commission failed to provide the particulars of the errors made on the form and also did not give him the opportunity to respond to the issues they had raised. But lawyer for the Electoral Commission, Justin Amenuvo, told the court that from the evidence provided by the applicant, he was given an opportunity to correct his errors. The judge adjourned the hearing to Monday, October 21, to rule on the applications. PNC flag bearer Benan Mona is optimistic about his chances. Clearly, you see that the EC has no case, but of course they have disqualified us. And the only place we can seek justice is to come to the court, and that is why we are in court. And so, once the judge is cleared in his mind and has said 20th for the ruling, we are confident that justice will be served us. Lawyer Harold Atuguba spoke to the media after the hearing. But the point is, you cannot sacrifice administrative convenience on the altar of violating constitutional principles. The, the judge has duly asked the lawyer in court, as an officer of the court, to advise his client, the Electoral Commission, that because of the pendency of this suit and the fact that it's been adjourned to Monday for a ruling, the client, that's the Electoral Commission, is off counsel should desist from doing anything that will overreach the decision of this court. And away from the court, Sunon Asogli Power Ghana Limited has announced the suspension of operations at its 560 megawatt power plant, effective Tuesday, October 8, 2024, at 5 p.m. In a statement, the company cited the inability to fund operations due to the Electricity Company of Ghana's failure to meet its overdue payment obligations as their primary reason for this difficult decision. 
In a press release, Sanam Asagli expressed regret over the shutdown, emphasizing that it has always been considerate in its dealings with ECG and the Ghanaian government. Unlike other independent power producers, the company has refrained from invoicing ECG for accrued idle capacity charges, demonstrating a commitment to collaboration. Despite this, ECG's outstanding debt to Sanan Asagli have reached a staggering $259 million, excluding fuel costs as of the end of September 2024. The company reported a significant increase in its debt, with a 23% rise in the net balance between January and September 2024. Additionally, only 22.6% of the invoices for this period have been settled by ECG through the cash waterfall mechanism. The suspension of the power plant is expected to have widespread implications for electricity supply in the country, raising concerns about potential power shortages. Now, Rona Motors, the official distributor of Kia vehicles in Ghana, has unveiled a special edition of the Kia Sportage to commemorate the model's 30th anniversary in the country. The 2024 Sportage the 30th anniversary edition is a limited-run model that highlights the SUV's evolution and Kia's commitment to innovation. Introduced in Ghana in 1994, the Kia Sportage has become a popular choice among Ghanaian drivers. Over the years, the model has undergone significant transformation to meet evolving customer preferences. The all-new Sportage we have today has become synonymous with dependability and innovation. The 2023 Sportage stands tall as a veteran with 30 years of exploration behind it. From the first generation, the Kia Sportage has grown into a global bestseller, selling over 7 million units across five generations. The 30th Anniversary Edition Sportage is designed to provide a more comfortable, safe and luxurious driving experience. Acoustic lamented glass, reinforced safety features with eight airbags, exclusive interior color options and premium materials are just a few of the upgrades included in this special edition. We gave a special color rims, which is uh, diamond black alloy rims. We put some gold chrome accents on it. The interior now has leather and Alcantara perforated seats in a unique color. You only get that color on the 30th anniversary edition. For our customers who can't pay outright, we have an in-house uh, payment plan where you do a deposit and the balance is spread for a period. If you want a longer period, we've got financial institutions we work with. We can link you up. A customer shares her experience with Kia Sportage. It's a very reliable car. I've had my generation three for, what, 12, 13 years. No issues. I ha and I now have a fifth generation. It's just good value. And the company itself, they're very friendly and helpful people. Only 30 units of the 30th anniversary edition Sportage are available in Ghana, making it a highly sought after the vehicle. Level. The first five owners have already taken delivery of their new SUVs. A morning tonight, stakeholders at the Employment Association Program Africa Summit are pushing for increased attention to mental health of staff to improve productivity. The event by Supreme Healthcare Management Services forms part of activities to mark mental health awareness in Ghana. The initiative, which aligns with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, specifically SDG 3, 8 and 17 seeks to highlight the urgent need to prioritize mental health and well-being of employees. The managing director of Supreme Healthcare Management Services, Patients or Secretary, highlighted the needs for employers to embrace and raise awareness on mental health. Mental health now, I would say that, has been on the dashboard now, on the business agenda. Employers are more embracing um, mental health in the workplace. Um, it's still, there is still a lot of work to be done in terms of stigma, and in terms of raising awareness about mental health. And even, even, you know, the difference between mental health and mental illness, people just get it confused. Because sometimes when you talk about mental health, they think, you know, this, this smart person on the street. But when we talk about mental health, we're talking about our mind space. Speaking at the fifth edition, the Chief Executive Officer for the Mental Health Authority, Professor Pinaman Apao, outline government's initiative for mental health. 
The authority, in collaboration with key stakeholders, has been actively promoting for the establishment of employee assistance programs across ministries, departments, agencies, and private sector organizations. These programs offer mental health support to employees through counseling services, stress management workshops, and referral pathways to professional care. This year's summit was on the theme, Mental Capital, enhancing socioeconomic growth and development through cutting edge mental health and well-being initiatives. You're still watching News 360 on TV3. We'll be back with the latest in the world of business right after this. Welcome back to News 360. Let's do business now. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, COPEC, is urging the National Petroleum Authority, the NPA, and the Ghana Standards Authority to enhance routine uh, inspections of fuel stations nationwide. This call to action follows a viral video that alleged that a Goyal station at Atimpoku in the eastern region was dispensing less fuel than what customers had paid for. The Chamber of Petroleum Consumers Ghana, COPEC, along with NPA and Ghana Standards Authority officials, visited the site to investigate the claims. I was happy that the Standards Authority official had already been here uh, since this issue came out. We saw his verification seal that suggests that he had come to check the pumps to be sure that uh, if somebody is buying one liter, it's one liter. Ten Ghana is ten Ghana. And that for us is some confidence building. And I'm sure that this will continue. Executive Secretary of COPEC, Duncan Amwa, stressed the need for increased inspections. If we do frequent inspections, you would realize that probably we need to change the machines. Probably the managers at the station are not working well. Probably people are also tampering with the machines to do whatever. For me, if we could do this every week, I'll be happy. The OMCs will need to be firm on their employees or workers so that if there's a misreading, you, the OMC, would even be aware before the consumer comes and gets an issue with whatever you are serving them. Eastern Regional Manager of the NPA, David Owusukina, encouraged the public to report any suspected discrepancies at fuel pumps for immediate action. I will appeal to the public, um, and as much as we want you to be bold enough you know, to request for the levels, we also entreat you to report it to the authorities who have the skill, who have the mandate to do the right investigations before we conclude. Because um, if, if it had been any other brand, I'm sure um, the brand you know, would have spoiled the brand. In more business news tonight, in the quest to achieve a transformative journey towards an enhanced customer experience, GCB Bank PLC has launched the customer experience campaign dubbed Go Beyond. There is more on this report. As part of its customer's experience campaign, GCB Bank PLC hosted a dynamic workshop designed to empower customers in the micro and small enterprises MSE segment of its retail banking division. The event commenced with a health screening session followed by a training program that addressed various facets of business management, finance and technology by KPMG. The executive head of retail at GCB Bank, Mr. Sena Kamagate, highlighted some bottlenecks within the MSEs. The session this workshop is to help take our customers through how to keep records, which is very, very important. Also, to take them through how they can uh, work around their tax and then file the relevant taxes. And more importantly, to create the platform for them to uh, network. Because what you have seen here today are various vendors, various sellers. And so it, it gives a value chain opportunity for people who work in the ecosystem to be able to network to demonstrate its steadfast support for customers and Ghana's micro small medium enterprises msmes the gcb's value added package vap was launched what gcb is saying is that for customers who bank with us and actually send in regular deposit through our e-collectors we are going to sign them on an insurance package they don't need to pay any premium. Keep an average uh, deposit balance of 50000 minimum, and then we sign you up. What is in it for you when we sign you up? You get to be indemnified 
20,000 Ghana cities should your west be destroyed by fire. So watching News 360, that's it for business. Stay with us. When we return, we'll let you know what's happening in the world of sports. Hello, good evening, and welcome to the sports segment here on News 360 with me, Eric Wampofo. We start off with the Black Stars and with the team on the brink of failing to qualify for the 2025 AFCON, General Manager for MG Sports, Michael J and sports journalist Sicho Fer Atrim believes that the problems go beyond just the Black Stars. Everybody needs to prioritize the interests of the country with our junior teams. With the under 17s, with the under 20s, with the under 23s, it's not happening. And it, when it's not happening that way, your players lose the desire, they lose what it looks like to win, they don't know each other, they don't have the intrinsic knowledge of knowing where to play the ball, where they find their colleagues. There is really no thread running through the development of our players. And if we keep going at it, so whilst we've had great rebuilding periods, there are rebuilding periods that have been aided by good factors, good trials at the youth level. And that's why the GFA must be concerned. And that's why everybody on the executive committee of Ghana football, those who run Ghana football, those who own the clubs and the rest, must begin to put the interest of the country at heart first. Because Ghana football needs to become more about the, 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 the country's football thriving, needs to get back to the 2010s when we were going to tournaments and enjoying. It wasn't as if everything was rosy then. At the moment, it's become pretty bad, and that's not good enough. The Black Stars results we saw against Sudan is not only a Black Star problem, it is a Ghana football problem. There's a reason why our under-17s have not done well, and our 20s are not doing well, and women's football hasn't necessarily been great. The league is not doing well. So we can't isolate the Black Stars and think that the Black Stars will enjoy success when all the other things that need to come together to feed the Black Stars isn't working as well. So in a, in, in a serious football nation, the league would find a way of feeding the juvenile teams. The juvenile teams will feed the national team, and then the national team will bring about success. But the league is not working, the juvenile teams are not working, and the Black Stars are suffering. And for me, the key thing that we need to do is to pick the right players when we are ready for youth competitions. Well, let's do some more stories here, where in less than 24 hours, Ghana's under-20 team, the Black Satellites, will compete in the Wafu Zumbi uh, under-20 tournament in Group A, alongside host Togo, Benin and Niger, hoping to secure qualification for the AFCON. Uh, but it is their first... Uh, time that they'll be playing since they won it in 2021. Remember that uh, they played in that final preparatory game that they suffered a humbling 5-0 defeat against Germany, uh, putting their credentials in doubt. But former Black Satellites coach Karim Zito believes that the result will only push the young squad to do more. It will rather energize them that if they are champions here, they are also champions somewhere. I, as if... Uh, I think they use this one to end, to run up their preparation, which is very good, before going to, uh, what do you call it? So now, the coach, I don't think, is, he looked at the, uh, the results, per se, but he looks of, at what they will do, or the way they will react to his instructions on the field of play. So to me, I see, it's a good exercise for them to make them tough and tougher when we go there to Estelle. Well, before we go, the 2024-2025 season of the Malta Guinness Women's Premier League has been launched here in Accra to kickstart a new era of elevating women's football in the country. For the third time, Malta Guinness is partnering the Ghana Football Association to promote inclusivity in the football sector. Launched in 2012 as the National Women's League, it is a top division league for women's soccer in Ghana. The 2024-2025 Women's Premier League season, sponsored by Malta Guinness, is scheduled to begin on October 18 across the northern and southern zones. We made great strides. We as Malta Guinness or Guinness Ghana are very proud of what we've been able to achieve um, together with the media and then the GFA in three years. Have all issues been solved in the Women's League? No. 
but we know that year on year there is improvement and for us that is what we, we want to see. According to the Women's Representative for the Ghana Football Association's Executive Council, Dr. Giftio Wari Mensa, to shape attitudes towards the Women's Premier League, some key initiatives have been introduced to whip up the interest of the younger generation, especially girls, to participate actively in women's football. We've launched what we call the Women Football Championship that is going around now from the women's desk and it's something that is really going on. And the Girl for Football, which we collaborated with GS also launched. So these are things we are doing to make the woman in the house, the woman on the street, the woman in the market know that football is something that had come to stay with us and that women can do good football. To celebrate outstanding performances, special cash awards have been introduced for the best player in both the Southern and Northern Divisions, as well as the best coach of the 2024-2025 season. Well, that's how we wrap up the sports segment here on News 360. My name is Aurel Kwampofo. Up next on the Bulletin is Entertainment. Before we do entertainment news, one soldier has died and five others seriously injured in a ghastly accident in Binduri in the Upper East region. The soldiers were returning to base after providing escorts for a government official when their truck reportedly skidded off the road in Bazoa and some assaulted. Stay tuned on TV3 as we bring you more of this developing story in our subsequent bulletins. Coming up, entertainment news. Entertainment news segment is brought to you by Enapa Foods, Heaven Black Insecticide Spray and Coil, powered by 3 Entertainment. Well, good evening and welcome to the entertainment news segment here on News360. My name is Noella Donko. Now, the presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party and the vice president, Dr. Mahamudu Baumia, is currently engaging with members of the creative arts, um, tourism and culture space. Now, in the evening encounter with the arts and tourism fraternity, it's happening at the Alisa Hotel's Ridge Arena in Accra. Free Entertainment gathers the purpose of the event organized by Dr. Baumia's team is to understand the challenges of the industry players and share his vision for promoting the growth of the sectors. It presents a platform for stakeholders to interact discuss pertinent issues affecting their sectors and explore potential policies to boost the creative economy. Stay tuned, we will certainly bring in new updates um, in our subsequent bulletins. Now to some more stories. Guinean rap icon Edem, born Denning Edem Hoto, dazzled the crowd at this year's Tidal Rave with a stunning performance that got fans yelling for more. Now, Edem, a standout performer, pulled up on stage, mesmerizing the ecstatic crowd of music enthusiasts with a performance of his banga, Muntashi. The music star appeared on the title race stage with fired up talents like 2024 mentor winner Vainu Ayoni, Streetwise Shakur, and a host of other promising talents he featured on his street anthem, Muntashi. Now, Edem donned a white t shirt that had favorite actress Nanama McBrown's face printed on the front to celebrate her. Meanwhile, the VRMG boss is expected to drop the highly anticipated song Muntashi this weekend. And then finally, US rapper Kendrick Lamar stole the show at the 2024 BET Hip Hop Awards, taking home eight prizes, including Song of the Year and Artist of the Year. The Not Like Us artist is nom was nominated for a total of 11 awards. Hosted by Fat Joe for the third year in a row, a ceremony in Las Vegas actually took place last week but was broadcasted on Tuesday night. Other notable winners included Nicki Minaj with Hip Hop Album of the Year, Sexy Red with Breakthrough Hip Hop Artist and Missy Elliott as Best Live Performer. Well, that'll be it for the entertainment news segment here on News 360. My name is Noella Donko. Thank you so much, Noella. Coming up, international news. 
A fuel tanker exploded overnight in northern Nigeria, killing at least 147 people who rushed to the scene of the accident to collect leaking petrol, officials say. The fire engulfed the overturned vehicle, which had been cordoned off by officers after it crashed. About 100 other people injured in the explosion have been taken to the hospital in the nearby town of Ringim in the Gigawa state. Many of them are in a critical condition. Officers had warned people not to approach the tanker after the accident late on Tuesday night, but they were unable to contain the growing crowd. And that's it for our package this evening. Thank you for watching. I am Martin Esiedu Dati. And I am Portia Gabodu. Join Alfredo Kansi at 10 p.m. for Ghana tonight. Good evening.